Good day, students. Uh, this group, we're going to be going over the first uh, set of conic sections, which is uh, circles. So we're going to be going all over how to graph them, label the graph, and also state what the result means. So let's go ahead and write down the instruction for the questions. Um, so I write it down for the given equations. Uh, you're going to describe, describe um, the, the conic section. Is it a circle, ellipse, hyperbola, parabola? Describe the conic section. Find all the relevant components. Find all relevant components. Um, then you're going to use those, that information to graph. After you're done graphing, you're going to label. And when you're done labeling, you're going to state and then state the meaning of your solution. State the meaning of your of your uh, result. Okay. All right. So for question one, we're going to consider the conic with a given equation x plus 3 square plus y minus 2 square equals 25. Okay, so what kind of conic is this? Is it a circle, ellipse, hyperbola, parabola? Well, if you notice, we have two squares and a plus, and the denominators are the same. Okay, we have two squares, a plus, and the denominators are the same. What are the denominators? You can put a 1 here. I put a one here so there's a, there isn't anything there so the denominators are identical so uh, this is the equation of, of a circle okay so um, let's first of all indicate what form this is this is a standard form standard form it's just a side note all right so what conic is this um, the conic is a circle all right okay now let's uh, find the relevant components for a circle for a circle the only things you need um, are the um, radius and center. So let's go ahead and, and find those. So the radius, well let's find the center first and then we'll find the radius next. Okay. All right, so center. So to find the center, remember you just take the opposite of the number next to each of the variables, right? So the opposite of the number next to x is the x coordinate, so negative 3. And the opposite of the number next to y is the y coordinate positive 2. All right, so there goes the center of the circle. Now, what is the radius? So in standard form, the number that it's the constant on the right side, you just take the square root of that, so square root of 25 equals 5. So that's your radius. What does this mean when we're sketching the graph? Well, it basically means that from the center, which is negative 3, 2, we're going to be going 5 units to the left. Um, to the right, 5 units to the left, we're going to be going 5 units up, and 5 units down. All right, so then we'll have this nice little circle. Okay, now these are the relevant components. Now we're going to do the next part, which is to graph. All right, so let's search the graph of our circle. We notice that we're going to be going to the left and then up, so our circle will be centered in quadrant number, um, quadrant number 2. So we're going to make quadrant 2 sufficiently large. We're going 5 units above 2, so it's going to be 7 units high, all right? And then if we want to think about how far to the right we're going to go, starting from negative 3, if you go 5 more, it's going to be 8 units to the left, all right? So let's make our uh, quadrant 2 sufficiently large. First thing we're going to graph is the center to get our orientation together. So uh, we're going to go, uh, let's label our axis. This is Y, and this is X. So we're going to go three units to the left, one, two, three, and then up two units, one, two. So that goes the center of our circle. Okay? So now to graph the extremities of the circle and circumference, we're going to uh, move five units in all directions. All right? So let's go up one, two, three, four, five. The point here, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So we're going to go north, south, east, and west. One, two, three, four, five. All right. One, 
two, three, four, five. Okay, and then you can draw a circle as best as you can um, around those points. And that goes the equation, that goes the graph of the, of the circle, okay? So we're going to label it. The only two things I would like you to label um, on this graph is the center and the radius, okay? So let's go ahead and draw the radius. Um, so in this case, this is the radius. And what is the value of the radius? It's two, uh, it's five units. Radius equals five. And then right here, this is your what? That is your center, okay? I want you to state the name of that label and the value. The center is negative three, two. Okay, so the center is negative three, comma, two. All right, so that's that. With the labeling of the circle, out of all the conic sections, this is the easiest one to label. All right, so now um, we're going to state what our result means. What does this mean? Well, using the definition of a circle um, and the result that we have, this is the meaning. So we have graph, and then let's state the meaning. All right, so the meaning is as follows. Um, the locus, locus basically means collection, okay? So the locus of points uh, five units, five units is a radius, five units from, from negative three to, which is the center, the locus of points, five units from negative three to the center, um, is given, uh, by the circle with equation with the equation, um, wait, let's put a definite article there, with the equation, what is the equation of the circle? Well, it's basically the problem that we're given, right? With the equation, we we'll go up, x, this, 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 we we'll just copy this down, ask what the equation is, with the equation, x plus three square, uh, plus y minus two square, equals 25. So that's basically uh, the meaning of, of this graph using the definition of circles, all right? All right, let's take a look at um, question number two. Uh, the same process, number two, we have um, x squared plus y squared plus 10x plus 2y minus 10 equals zero. Now, you notice the end of parenthesis here. This formulation is known as the general form, okay? So, all right, so let's write down the form. This is known as the general form. And uh, all the quantities in the parentheses are completely expanded and is written in this form. This is known as the general form. All right, so um, let's see. So uh, what kind of conic is this? Can we identify the conic? Well, we can uh, change it into standard form first and then identify the conic. Just by looking at this, though, we can also determine what the conic is. You notice we have two squares, a plus in between them. And since it's general form, we're going to look at the coefficients. The coefficients in this case are both one, okay? So if you have two squares, a plus, and equal coefficients in the general form, guess what? You have the equation of a circle, okay? So this is the equation of a circle, but we're going to change this into standard form first, and then you see for certainty that it actually is the case, okay? So the question is, how do we change um, this into standard form so that we can find the components and graph? I'm just going to complete the square uh, twice, and that will uh, give us the desired result. So before we complete the square, we have to set this up properly. We need the x's together, so I'm going to uh, place these two x's, in terms of the x's, next to each other. So x squared plus 10x. And then um, the y's, this y squared and the 2y, I'll put them next to each other. Uh, plus y squared plus 2y. This is neither an x nor y is a constant. And we know in the standard form, the constant is on the right side of the equal sign, right? So we just add 10 to both sides to move it all over to the other side, okay? So equals 10. The reason why we separated the variables like this is we want to complete the square for each variable, all right? So to ensure that we do not 
confuse ourselves or mix up the variables, we're going to partition uh, our variables into two worlds, okay? We're going to have, this is going to be the x world, this is going to be the y world. So let's complete the square in both of them. For the, in the x uh, world, this is um, my a. a is like a, a is 1, okay? And this is b. And then this for the for the uh, for the y world, this is my a, and this is my b. If you want to complete the square, the way you complete the square is you you add b over two square to this two uh, terms on both worlds, and that will complete the square. So basically, adding b over two square uh, completes the square. All right. So let's do the x world first. So in the x world, the b of the x world is 10. So to create a perfect squared trinomial here, we have to add a term that completes the square. So to do that, we're going to divide b by 2, b of the x world by 2, which is 5, and then we're going to square that. Okay, remember it's b over 2 squared, that's what completes the square. So when we square this, we're going to get 25. All right, so in the x world, we're going to have the perfect square trinomial x squared plus 10x plus 25. All right. So here we have a perfect square trinomial. In the y world, we're going to do the same procedure. I'll be over 2 square, but in the y area, b of y is 2. As you can see there, b of y is 2. So what do we do with that? We divide it by 2 because we need b over 2 and we have to square it. So 2 over 2 is 1. And then when we square that, 1 square, that equals 1. Okay, so we add that to the y world, and that will basically complete the square there. So we have y squared plus 2y uh, plus 1. All right? So you notice we introduced two new numbers to the left side. So to preserve equality, we have to add the same numbers to the right side of the equation. Okay, so we added a 25 here. So we added 25. And then we added a 1 here, so we also have to add a 1. Okay? All right, now... Uh, when we have perfect square trinomials, we can factor using the x game, or there's a factor in truth we can use. We're going to use a shortcut um, in this problem. So the shortcut, you just root the first and the last term, and you bring down the middle sign. Okay? So, um, root the first and the last, bring down the middle sign. So the square root of x squared is x. The sign here is plus, and then the square root of 25 is 5 quantity squared. Okay, bring down this plus. We're going to do the same thing in the y world. Um, we're going to root the first and the last terms and then simply bring down the middle sign. Okay, all right, so the square root of y squared is y. Bring down the plus. The square root of 1 is 1, quantity squared. And here we just combine these three numbers 10 plus 25 is 35 plus 1, 36. Guess what? We now have our standard form. Okay. So what conic is this? You notice that we have two squares, um, a plus in between, and the denominator is about one. All right, so this is a, is a circle. So the conic section is a circle. All right, now let's find the relevant components for a circle. The only two things we need, the center and the radius. So let's find the center first. So how do we find the center? You take the opposite of the numbers next to each variable, right? So negative 5, comma, and in the y world, negative 1. That goes the center. Now let's look for the radius. So to get the radius, we, we are going to take the square root of the constant on the right side of the equal sign. So the square root of 36 is 6. What does this mean? Well, this means that we're going to be going 6 units in all directions from the center which is negative 5, negative 1, so 6 units in all directions. Okay, now we have all the information that we need to generate our graph. So let's go ahead and, and graph uh, the circle. All right, so let's take a look at the, the setup first. Negative 5, negative 1 is clearly in quadrant 3 because we're going to go to the left 5 units and go down 1 unit, okay? And then we're going to go 6 units up, down, left, right. So... Um, we're going to make our quadrants um, 2 and 3 pretty large because the, the circle goes down by only one unit, right? So it goes down once, so it goes up 5 and down 7 units. 
and then um, we're going to make our y-axis, our x-axis really long to the left because we're going to go 5 and then another 6 which is negative 11. All right, so this setup should work. Uh, let's label our coordinate system. This is my um, y-axis, this is my x-axis. All right, so the center is negative 5, negative 1, so go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and down negative 1. There goes your center. And uh, what do we do from here? We're going to go 6 units in all directions, all right? So we're going to go 6 units up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, north and south. 6 units south, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 units to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then 6 units to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay? So these points define the extremity of the circle. Uh, so let's go ahead and graph that. Okay, so there goes your circle. Now we need to label our graph, all right? So how do we label it? Uh, we just need two things, the circle, I mean the center and the radius, okay? So from the extremity, from the center to the extremity, that's your radius. So we have to state the name and the value. So this is the radius, radius, and in this problem, the radius is uh, six units. And then um, the center, this right here, is your center. And what are the coordinates of your center? Is one as a negative five comma negative one. All right. So there goes your graph. All right. So what does this all mean? Let's take the meaning of this result using the definition of a circle. So meaning. What does this mean? It means that the locus. The locus of points. Uh, six units, because that's the radius, six units from negative five, negative one, which is the center, um, is that it is a circle with uh, equation. So let's put the general form. So we just write on the general form with equation x squared plus y squared plus 10x plus 2y minus 10 equals 0. Or um, x plus 5 squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 36. So there are two formulations basically uh, of the of, of a circle that satisfies this condition. Okay, this is the general form and this is the uh, standard form. All right, so there you have it. All right, let's try another example. Let's take a look at uh, question number three. Okay, so uh, in question three, what if we have the equation x squared plus y squared minus 6x plus 10y plus 9 equals 0. Okay, so we know that this is a general form. General form of the equation of a circle. I mean, yeah. Anyway, uh, so we have to also identify the conic. How do we know that it is a circle, is in fact a circle? Well, we know that it's a circle because of three things. First of all, we have two squares. We also have a plus in the coefficients because it's a general form of both one, so we know that it is a circle, all right? But how about we transform this into the standard form and then we can uh, be sure about what our, our description of the conic is. So for this one, uh, to uh, do this, we are going to uh, organize our x's and y's so we can complete the square without getting confused with our variables. So let's put the x's next to each other. We have x squared minus 6x. And then we are going to place the y's next to each other in terms of the y's. So plus y squared plus 10y. And then this constant, we know the uh, standard form of a equation of a conic uh, constant is always on the right side. So we subtract 9 from both sides. Subtract 9, subtract 9. So this is equal to negative 9. Okay. Now let's partition our variables and complete the square for each world, okay? So let's break it down the center. 
All right, so for the X world, um, we are going to need B, right? So this is A, it's 1, and that's B right there. I'm going to write that again so it's clear. Uh, this is A, and this is B. And for the uh, Y world, this is A, and this is B. Now to complete the square, uh, all we need to do is basically uh, B over 2 squared. We just need to add B over 2 squared to the term, and that will create the perfect square trinomial. If we have it in this form where a is 1 and then there's another value for b. All right, so let's do them one by one in the x world. So the b for the x world is basically negative 6. So what do we do with this? We'll divide it by 2, which equals negative 3, and we'll square it. Okay, remember it's b over 2 squared. And then we square negative 3, 9. So introducing 9 to these two terms will complete, we'll make a perfect square trinomial. For the uh, x world, I mean for the y world, b of y is 10. So what do we do with that? We divide it by 2, which equals 5. And and then we did we need b over 2, and then we gotta square it. So we square that. Uh, and that's 25. Okay, so that completes the square in the in the x world. Alright, so let's go ahead and introduce the terms that creates a perfect square trinomial. So we're gonna have x squared minus 6x. To complete this square, we need 9, so we add 9. And then um, for the y world, plus y squared plus 10y. To complete the square there, we need to add 25, so we add 25. Okay. Now we added, introduce two numbers to the left side of the equation to preserve equality. We have to do the same to the right side, so we need to add 9. And then add 25. Okay. All right. Now we have two perfect square trinomials. Let's go ahead and factor these um, using the shortcut I showed you. So you just simply root the first term and the last term, and then you bring down the middle sign. Okay. All right. So in this case, we're going to have um, x minus, bring down the minus, minus 3 quantity squared plus, we'll do the same uh, thing with the y. Uh, well, you read the first and the last and bring down the middle sign. Okay, so root the y square. Write that again. You root the y square. And then you root the 25. And then you bring down the middle sign. So it's going to be uh, y plus 5 square. Okay, so there you have it. And then on the right side, minus 5 plus minus 0 plus 25. So basically our equation is x minus 3 square plus y plus 5 square equals 25. All right, so this is the standard form. And we can clearly see what kind of conic this is, right? We have two squares, a plus, and the denominator is about 1. So this is going to be a circle. Okay, so the conic here is a circle. All right, uh, next thing we need is we need to find the components that will enable us to graph it. For a circle, all you need is a center and radius. So let's find out the center first. You do the opposite of the um, of the numbers next to each variable. So next to x, you have the negative 3. You do the opposite, positive 3. And next to positive 5, you have negative 5. Okay? So there goes the center. That's where you start graphing from. Next thing we need is the radius. To find the radius, uh, we'll just simply take the square root of the constant on the right side. So uh, we'll just take the square root of 25, which equals 5. What does that mean? Well, it means we're going to go from the center, which is 3, negative 5. We're going to go 5 units in all directions, okay? 5 units up, down, left, right. Connect the dots. That will be the equation of our circle. All right, so now let's go ahead and graph. Okay, let's graph this. Okay, so we're going to the, we're going to the right 3 and down 5. And then another down 5 and up 5. So basically we're going down as far as 10. And then just stopping at the x-axis. So our center is clearly going to be in quadrant 4. Uh, so let's make our quadrant 4 sufficiently large. I can extend a little bit. So, um, so make quadrant 4 large enough. And we're going to go down 5 and then another 5 downwards so that uh, we can get the entire radius. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and label our um, coordinate system. This is my uh, y-axis, this is my x-axis. All right, so we're gonna go to the right, one, two, three, and then down, one, two, three, four, five. So that goes the center. All right, now we're gonna go five units in all direction, five units up, one, two, three, four, five, five units down, one, two, three, four, five. Five units to the right. One, two, three, four, five. And then five units to the left. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? All right, connect the dots. That will be the equation of our circle. So let's go ahead and grab that. So there, there you have it. Okay? All right, now we have to label our, our graph, our conic section. So only two things we have to label, the radius and state its value. The radius is um, five units. And um, we also have to label the center. Label the center and state its value. So the center, that's where the center is, and it's three comma negative five. And uh, that's it. All right, so what does this mean? What is the meaning of our result using the definition of a circle? Meaning. All right, so the meaning is uh, the locus of all, of all points. The locus of all points, um, five units, that's the radius. Five units from the center, three, negative five, is the circle with equations equations we can provide a 2x squared plus y squared minus 6x plus 10y plus 9 equals 0 as a general form or uh, the standard form x minus 3 squared plus y plus 5 squared equals uh, 25 okay so that's basically uh, what our the meaning of our result is okay so that's that so thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation uh please feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here and you can click like if you like this clip and please post a comment to let me know what you think about this presentation and more clips can be found on microservice.com thanks again and have a wonderful day